Welcome back. Conversation with Positive Be White. It's good to see you back. Glad to have you. I really, really, really missed Ollie. I really did. I promise I did. Today is going to be a great show. I got my main man Preston in here to talk some very interesting topics. We're going to talk fatherhood, being girl dads, and we're even going to wrap it up with some CTE discussion. We're going to talk about concussions. Y'all stay tuned. Lock in with me. It's your boy Positive Be White. Let's get into it. Boy, positive be white, and I want to welcome you back to the conversations with positive be white. How are you handling today? I'm done. Basically, I've been very blessed in the, in the situations that I've been in. Excuse me, I, I don't want to be this one. I want to say seal entrepreneur. She does. And then I also want to, want to get into it fatherhood. <laughs> Preston, what's going on, my man? What's going on? Good to see you, White. What's going on? How you doing, sir? I'm doing phenomenal, man. And yeah. it's it, it's been a minute trying to put this together. Yeah, man. I'm very excited about this. Yeah, we had some time trying to get everybody on the same schedule. Yep. And uh, Lord behold, we made it happen. Man, it's it's just a blessing, divine timing, and um, it, uh, this is gonna be a great conversation. I'm I'm excited about it. Congrats on all your success, man. You've been you've been killing the game for a long time, and you know I'm just uh, grateful to be here with you and just talk with you. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Yeah. And then I also want to get into it, fatherhood. <laughs> yeah, fatherhood. And the word girl dad, the term girl dad. Yeah. What does that mean to you with us having a similar experience being girl dads? How, how's fatherhood treat you right now? Well, um, got a beautiful little girl. Um, it's been refreshing. You know, um, I think children provide a different type of love that um, you can, you can, you think about, but that unconditional love, that's, that's really what they bring out in you. And so um, my little girl, she's amazing. And, you know, seeing that smile on her face every day, you know, that drives you, that puts something in you. It gives you that extra gas. You know, you had the worst day in the world, right? but you see that little girl and you, it just, it just, it just melts you. So it's brought out um, a different side of me a different fire in me. I feel like, you know, I, I have a son that that was one level, but this, you know, you your protection level goes to a it's heightened Good once roof. you get that girl dad. So yeah. um, I'm I'm just grateful, man. I'm very grateful. God has really blessed me with a with a beautiful daughter. So that's what girl dad is to me. Just <laughs> new levels, man. How about how, how's your experience? Man, man I, it, it's a beautiful experience. And then speaking of girl dad, my wife bought me a shirt, right? Uh -huh. And it says girl dad officially outnumbered. <laughs> yeah, because so, you are outnumbered. When I saw it, I was just like, it really fits the situation. Yeah. And then what you just spoke about, just being able to see their faces. When I come home and she, the, I can hear her jumping off the bed, yeah. running in the room, and she comes to give me this big hug. And I, I can't even, I, I just can't get through my head that yeah. feeling of, of, of pride. Yeah. Just just being that fatherhood, man. And, and it's, it, it's a beautiful thing, man. Man, it it has changed. Like I'm so much more grateful for my partner. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like it changed the way I look at her. Now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like you know this this gift that has been given to me. You know it. I can't thank her enough for for giving because you know we we do our thing. Right. But we had an easy part. As I far as the creation, <laughs> as yeah, we ain't got to carry it. We yeah. got to deal with you, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, but you know, just, um, just you know, I'm I'm not a perfect father, but mm -hmm. you know, I've got a great partner, and she she does a lot of great things, and so, you know, it's just, it makes me think about, you know, when I talk to her, um, what is she gonna think of her mother? What's she gonna think of her father? Mm -hmm. What's she gonna learn from us? Right. You know, um, my my daughter's mother's a chef oh wow yeah and so um you know i talked to her about you know if she how's she gonna get your recipes if you don't write them down mm -hmm. you know putting those legacy pieces in place so that way we set that blueprint for her easily to follow whatever path she want to choose when she grow up she can choose right but you know i think of um you know did you watch that serena we uh king arthur king richard I haven't watched it yet. Wait, I know Will what you're Smith? talking about, though. Yeah. Bro, he had a whole plan for his little girls. Mm -hmm. Written out plan. Yeah. And you see how that plan has taken place. You got Venus and Serena, they're the best two 
tennis players of all time because he created that plan for his daughters. Absolutely. Um, and so those are things that, I, you know, I really watched that and I, I think about those things a lot more now. Mm -hmm. You know, what what parameters, what things am I going to put in her so that way she she guarantees for success. She already set up for success. All she got to do is take it. Right. Yeah. So, man, it's a, fatherhood is beautiful, man. It's beautiful. What's been your biggest challenge of fatherhood? Uh, the biggest challenge, I would say just adjusting to just knowing someone's looking at you, if that makes sense. And then what I what I mean by that is my daughter is very smart. She picks up on mm -hmm. things very, very, very quickly. Yeah. So now her thing is if she sees trash in the floor, or if she sees something on the ground, mm -hmm. she she automatically picks it up and goes and throws it. That's trash. That's <laughs> wonderful. You, you know did I mean? your thing there. But it's a good thing. But <laughs> yeah. Hey, look, but on the flip side, oh, yeah. she sees things and it's like, wait a minute, we need that. <laughs> yeah. I and I you. have to go digging in the, in the trash to try to find yeah. stuff. Uh, but she's very very perceptible things yeah and i have to constantly tell myself that hey you got a, a a young person sitting behind you watching you yeah so i have to be very um uh considerate of what i'm doing yeah and she don't even know what she's she doing she and you can't even come down on her because she don't know what she's doing <laughs> she's just trying to figure it out right yeah that's and she's, she's very smart she's yeah. very and she picks up on things very quickly yeah um but i i do want to you you mentioned structure yeah. so let's talk let's talk structure and why you think structure is so important when raising a uh, a girl let's just keep it on on, on on girl structure is that important because we ain't gonna be there around forever we're not and she gonna go to the school she gonna go places and mm -hmm. she gonna go um be out in the world and so if we don't set that foundation then she gonna do whatever she wanna do or she's gonna try everything and you know you want them to try stuff but you you want those boundaries especially as a little girl you want her to know this is okay this ain't okay mm -hmm. and so putting her in those disciplines i mean my my daughter's young right now she's seven months mm -hmm. so it's not like i can be firm on a whole lot of things right now right. but the structure of you know praying you know, we're going to say our prayers in the morning. We're going to say our prayers before we eat. We're going to say our prayers at night. Mm -hmm. You know, reading books before bed or getting in those habits. Those habits going to pay off down the road. Absolutely. And so for me, that structure is creating habits because, you know, I have a son that's older, mm -hmm. who's five. And the things that, you know, I was away from him for a long time, but the things that the structural things that we did, mm -hmm. he still remembers those things mm -hmm. because those were the habits that we did. So. I think that is the biggest thing with the, with young kids is creating a structure that they know, all right, this is what safety is to me. This is what um, I do before I eat. This is what um, I need to learn every single day. Because if we set that young, then we're not waiting on teachers and stuff like that to do those things because we've already instilled it. Right. Yeah. So I want to get a, I mean, I know you have a son as well. Yeah. So I want to get into how is it different raising the girl and the boy? What are some what are some similarities that you have in raising them, and what are some differences? Because obviously, I know when you're raising a, a a boy, it's a little different. It's some little, little things tougher, you tweak. Yes, yeah, you, little, you, we it's get a up, tougher. Go, go. Well, you know, <laughs> it, it, was training, it was training day once he came out the room. No, <laughs> no um, my son's a beautiful. Uh, I got a beautiful son, Legend Preston. Um, I think the biggest thing is the softness. Mm -hmm. That you're still soft with your sons at, at time, but you need to let them know that, you know, you're you're a young man. Like mm -hmm. you you need to start to set the tone right. a little bit. They, you're, you you got to prepare him for a different type of battle than you got to prepare her. for. Absolutely. And so um, the discipline, it has to be heightened a little bit mm -hmm. with the sons, especially because they get they, they get the energy, the girls. You're a little bit softer with them naturally because they're girls, but right. you know, he gonna, he want to play everywhere. He want to go and he want to jump in the pool. He want to do all these things. Got to tighten them up a little bit. Mm -hmm. And from my experience, um, I can't say that, you know, I've been, I've had the closest relationship with my son. He, he lives in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And so having that distance makes those moments more valuable. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, making sure if I only see him once a month or once every two months, all right, pray over him. 
to take him in and we're gonna do training. Mm -hmm. I can, with my little girl, I can, you know, she gonna wanna play and do her <laughs> stuff and watch her shows. That's mm -hmm. cool, we gonna do it. But him, that structure is extra because if he don't get that discipline, when he sees me, he knows, then he's just gonna think he can do whatever. Right. And, you know, a lot of us, you know, as black men, some of us have kids that are not with us all the time. Mm -hmm. And so, um, how do we instill that love in them? Because we do love them. Mm -hmm. But also make let them know that you're, there's expectations, mm -hmm. especially as a, a man. That's the one thing, there's expectations for us. From the moment we come out, we gotta do something. We gotta do something. Yeah, and so um, that's one thing that I really has been different because she's so young, mm -hmm. but I can already feel like you know, she can she can pull on me, or I'm gonna be a little bit softer. I'll, I'll get her out the bed where mm -hmm. I would have left him in there, or something like that. Mm -hmm. But I I really am focusing on, you know, just showing him love when I see him, and then discipline, okay. tighten you up, tighten you up, tighten you up, so that way we don't have to worry about you when you're older. Right. Yeah. And I, I it was so funny you mentioned that the difference with in raising them too. Mm -hmm. Uh, you ever familiar with T.K. Kirkland? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so T.K. Kirkland, he, 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 they asked him, what's the difference between you and your girl, your, your girls and your boys? He said, man, my sons, he said, it's different. He said, if they want something, they got to call me man to man. You know, if they asking for whatever, they got to mm -hmm. call me on the phone man to man. Yeah. And we got to have a conversation about it. Yeah. What's this going to be? What's, what are we doing with this? He said, my girls, they get whatever they want. I fell out laughing. <laughs> I fell out laughing. Yeah. So it was it, it was a funny. But you thing. got one little girl. You I mean you would you in for it. Yeah, I'm in for it, man. You in for it. How is that? Has that? How has that changed you? Uh, I think it made me a better man, to yeah. be honest with you. Um, because I'm a lot more careful of the things I do, and then even down to my diet like my diet i, I kind of try to think about I'm like, like wait a minute i want to be here you know what i mean so normally would you would stop to get that that burger and fries i'm like <laughs> let me go let, let me let me try to get something a little yeah. a little more healthier yeah. you know what i mean yeah, but uh, yeah. i think it's it's a good thing yeah um being a father and i one of my guys he uh reggie he runs a father figure uh, apparel company okay yeah, and, and one of his quotes that he uses a lot of the time is be present, not perfect. So when you think of fatherhood, it's not really a, a, a guarantee for us to be perfect yeah. because nobody in the world is perfect. We're going to mess up. But the main thing is you just want to be present and have that relationship with your child where they know, hey, this is dad. I can talk to him about any and everything and he'll be here for me. That's cool. That's yeah. cool. Be present. I, did it change your relationship with your parents? Uh, I, I I begin to appreciate them even more. Yeah. And they told me that. They said, when you have yours, you'll you'll understand some of the things we went to and some of the sacrifices we made. So I'm understanding that because I'm in that transition of making those sacrifices. Yeah. So yeah, it, it makes a difference. It makes it it makes a difference. I think I appreciate my parents a, a lot more, and I see. Like I, my dad, my dad was like a nonprofit in the community and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. you know, I see the the impact that he had on not only me but the, my friends and stuff like that because he was there. Mm -hmm. And you know, I think that's invaluable sometimes. Absolutely, it's like you know, just being there. You don't. I mean, he wouldn't. You don't gotta be perfect. You just gotta be in there. Let them see that I don't gotta be perfect. But right. I'm gonna make mistakes. But as long as I'm here, I'm trying, I'm giving my effort, you know, the best things can happen. So, you know, I'm just grateful for my parents and, you know, my kids now. I, how many are you, How many kids you want to have? Oof, my wife wants three. You um, getting there? Yeah, so, yeah, so we, we're going to do it one at a time. We're one at a time, one at I would time. say, one at a time. But um, we're going to take a quick break and then when we come back, we're going to have a uh, some more conversation. We're going to go a little bit deeper. But we'll be right back. Y'all stay tuned. Faith is one of those things that, and, and let me let me say this, faith over fear. Faith over fear. If you have faith that things can get better, they will get better in time. And 
I also want to mention this word as well. We spoke about it a little bit earlier, intentional. Be intentional. If you have a God-given purpose, allow God to bring that purpose through you. Although you may wake up and you don't feel good or you don't feel like you're worthy, allow God to let his purpose shine through you because somebody needs that message. Whether you know it or not, somebody needs your message. So, so have faith and don't let the fear overcome you. Continue to stay prosperous and stay faithful. Faith over fear and intentional. Stay intentional. Yeah. yeah. Welcome back to Conversations with Positive B. White. Thanks for tapping in and tuning in with me. I'm here with my main man, Preston. Y'all check it out. So Preston, man, we're back at it. Back, we're back at, at it. At it. Um, thanks for having you here again. I appreciate you taking time out your day to come in and, and kick it. Yeah, kick it, man. Yeah. yeah. So I want to get into it. I want to go a little deeper. Like I said, we're going to dive a little deeper. So we had a conversation earlier. What was it like not being able to see your son for three years? Tell me what that was like to you and how that affected you mentally. So I, so I'll say this. Um... Boy, Positive B. White, and I want to welcome you back to the Conversations with Positive B. White. How are you handling today? I'm telling you, basically I've been very blessed being this that I've been Excuse me, not, I don't want to be this one. I want to say seal entrepreneur. She does. And then I also want to, want to get into it, fatherhood. <laughs>